This is the second lecture for section 1.3 on Eulerizing graphs. In this lecture, I'll go through several practice problems to show you how the process works. So to review, the way that we Eulerize a graph is we look at a graph and we look at the degree of every vertex. And if any of those numbers are odd, we know that that graph does not have an Euler circuit. So what we do is we then Eulerize it by duplicating existing edges until all of the degrees are even. And then on that new graph, we find an Euler circuit. And that circuit on the original graph is a circuit that retraces any of those edges that we had to duplicate. And so the idea is that if we want to minimize retracing, we minimize the number of edges that we duplicate. So here's an example where we're given a graph, we're asked to explain why this graph does not have an Euler circuit, and then we want to do the Eulerizing process, and then we want to find an Euler circuit on that modified graph. So the way that we explain why the graph does not have an Euler circuit is we look at the degree of every vertex. So remember that that means that we're going to count the number of edges that go into each of these points. So A has two edges going into A, so A has degree two, B has degree three, and again, we could stop at that point. We've found a, a vertex that has an odd degree, so we could just stop and say, hey, any of those numbers turned out to be odd, so we know the graph doesn't have an Euler circuit. But just to practice, I'm gonna go through and find the degree of all the vertices. So C has degree three, D has degree two, E has degree four, there's four of these edges going into E, and then F has degree two. So our explanation would say something like, since the degree of B is three, which is odd, this graph does not have an Euler circuit. So that's how we would answer part A of this kind of problem. So now let's think about part B. You might be tempted to draw a new edge from B to C. So remember that our degrees that we had found was A had degree two, B had degree three, C had degree three, D had degree two, E had degree three, and F had de uh, E had degree four, and F had degree two. And so if we draw this new edge, then what that does is now B has four edges coming into it. So B has now has degree four, C also now has four edges going into it, so C has degree four. So this new graph that we've created does have an Euler circuit. But the problem is that when we find the Euler circuit for this graph, one of the parts of that path that we're gonna create is gonna have us go from B directly to C. And we can't do that on our original graph, right? That's creating a road that doesn't exist or crossing a bridge that isn't there. So we can't just create a brand new edge out of nowhere. If we're going to do this Eulerizing process, what we have to do is duplicate an existing edge because duplicating an existing edge is going to correspond to retracing that edge when we go back to the original graph. So we've got to try again here. Okay, back to the original problem. So again, our degrees were two, three, three, two, four, and two. So what we have to do is duplicate edges until we get all of those numbers being even. So B and C are the sort of bad vertices, the ones we want to fix, but we can't just draw a new edge directly from B to C. So instead, maybe what I'll do is draw a new edge from B to A. What does that do to my degrees? Well, B now has degree four, that's good, but A now has degree three. Hmm. So we sort of fixed B, but broke A. But that's okay. If we also duplicate the edge from A to C, now A goes up to four and C goes from three to four. And now all of my degrees are even. So now what we can do is find an Euler circuit for this new graph. So for example, I could start at D and I'll go from D to B, I'll go from B up to A, I'll go from A back to B, I'll go from B to E, E up to C, E up to A, C, uh, A back down to C, go down to F, over to E and back to D. So if I were gonna write down my list of vertices, what did I do? I did B, D to B, and then I did B to A, back to B, I went down to E, I went up to C, up to A, back to C, down to F, over to E, and back to D. So this was my Euler circuit on my new modified graph. And if I take that Euler circuit and go back to the original graph, that circuit is gonna have two retraces. It's gonna take the edge from A to B and walk along that twice, because here I am walking along that edge from A to B twice. And it's gonna also retrace the edge from A to C, because there I have 
walked along that edge twice as well. So that's not going to be an Euler circuit for the original graph, but it is going to be a circuit that only has two retraces. So that's the Eulerizing process. So the idea is to minimize the number of retraces by minimizing the number of edges that you duplicate. Right? So let's think about how we might know if we found the best solution. Remember, duplicating an edge is going to add one to the degree of the two vertices it connects. right? So every time we duplicated an edge in the previous example, both of the numbers on both ends of that edge that we duplicated went up by one. And if we add one to an odd number, that fixes it. That makes it an even number. So if we can do it, if we can duplicate an edge that connects two odd vertices, that's going to fix both of them. Now remember, in the previous example, we couldn't actually do that directly. We couldn't duplicate an edge between the two odd numbers because there wasn't an existing edge between those two odd numbers. So we couldn't, we can't always do this, but that's sort of the sort of like ideal situation is if we have two odd numbers already connected by an edge, we duplicate that edge, that makes both of those odd numbers go up by one, that makes both of those odd numbers even, that's what we want. Okay, so here's another example, and I've already calculated the degrees for you. And what I've done is I've colored in red the odd degrees, right? So the odd degrees are the sort of bad numbers that we don't want. And so what we want to try to do to Eulerize this graph is to duplicate as much as we can edges that connect two odd numbers. So for example, D and G are both degree three. So if I duplicate this edge from D to G, now that becomes four, and now that also becomes four. And that one duplication has fixed both of those numbers, right? So we can do that again. So E to I, for example. I can connect a new edge from E to I. Again, that changes that to a 4, that changes that to a 4, and we fixed that as well. And now we're kind of stuck because B and F are the two remaining odd numbers, but there is no existing edge that goes from B directly to F. So the best we could do here is to duplicate B to E. That fixes B, but then breaks E. And then E to F would make F be a 6, and that turns into a 6 as well. So we ended up having to duplicate four edges. And, and this is not the only way to do this, right? There's other ways that we could have duplicated different edges here. But if we're thinking that potentially we could fix two vertices with each edge, we had six odd vertices. And if each duplicated edge changes two of the degrees, we might hope to only use three edges. So that doesn't really quite work though, right? So again, here's the solution that we came up with, but we weren't able to do what we might hope if we just counted, right? So again, the idea is if you know how many odd vertices you have, you might think to yourself, oh, well, maybe I can fix two at a time. And if I have four, or sorry, I have six odd vertices, half of six is three. So maybe if I fix two at a time, I can get this whole thing done in only three duplicated edges. So that's what you might think and what you might hope for, but it doesn't always work out that way. All right, let's do one more example. So here we have, a, we've actually worked on this example before. We have a city with a river running through it, and we have this inspector who wants to walk across every bridge exactly once and return to their starting point. And so we want to know, is that possible? And if not, can we find a tour that minimizes the retracing? So what we did before is we created the graph for this situation, and I'm sort of going to repeat that process here, and we were able to figure out that this graph did not have an Euler circuit, and then we were just done. We just said, oh, well, this the inspector can't do it, so problem over. But now we're going to ask ourselves how to minimize the retracing. Okay, so we got four land masses, A, B, C, and D. So I'm going to draw some uh, graph here, some vertices, one vertex for each land mass, so A, B, C, and D. I've got two bridges from A to B, so I've got two edges from point A to point B. I've got one bridge from A to C, so I've got one edge from point A to point C. One bridge from B to C, two bridges from B to D, and then one bridge from D to C. And if we count up the degrees, A has degree 3, B has degree 5, C has degree 3, and D has degree 3. So as we've seen before, this graph is really bad. All of the degrees are odd, so this graph definitely does not have an Euler circuit. But now what we want to do is try to fix this graph by duplicating edges. So again, thinking about what we were talking about before, we have four odd vertices. 
every duplicated edge has the potential to fix two of those odd vertices. So if we have four odd vertices, half of four is two. And so if we can fix two at a time, hopefully maybe we can do this by only duplicating two of the edges and each duplicated edge is gonna fix two vertices. Let's see if we can do that. So I'm gonna duplicate an edge from D to C. So a new edge from D to C. And that, what does that do to my degrees? So instead of having degree three, D now has degree four. C now has degree four. All right, so we fixed C and D. Can we duplicate one more edge and fix both A and B? And we can. If I duplicate an edge from A to B, then now my degree of A is four and my degree of B is now six. So on that new graph, I've got a, uh, I've got all even vertices, which means I have an Euler circuit. And so now when I find an Euler circuit, I'll, I'll leave that to you to think about, but now when I find an Euler circuit, that Euler circuit is going to correspond to a circuit on my original graph that is gonna retrace one of the bridges from A to B twice. And it's gonna retrace one of the bridges from C to D twice, and that's it. That'll be the sort of minimum amount of retracing that I have from that Euler circuit. 